Bit of a somber start here earlier this week. Rush Limbaugh, famous yet controversial radio host, passed away at the age of 70. And he had a large uh, footprint and various media platforms. And I just want to say right now that I ain't going to fucking miss that piece of shit at all. I ain't going to fucking miss him. Fuck Rush Limbaugh. I'm glad he's dead. Karma gotcha, you toxic devil son of a bitch. You fucking deserved every bit of karma that you fucking got. And I hope, I hope it ate at you. I hope that every little bit of that ate at you and ate at you. And that you knew that by the end of your life, the only people that loved you, the only people that respected you, were the same ones that had the toxic mindset that you have. So fuck Rush Limbaugh. Glad he's dead. Don't fucking care if people want to get upset about that. Because here's the thing. This isn't a political thing. It's a humanity thing. You want to be that goddamn toxic, you want to spread that much misinformation and be that hateful towards gay people, towards minorities and so many other people, yeah, you're gonna have karma fucking coming for you. So yeah, fuck Rush Limbaugh, I'm glad he's dead. Burn in hell, you stupid son of a bitch. Now, I'm John Rethel with my review of WWE Smackdown as well as my Elimination Chamber 2021 predictions. Let me just say right now that this episode of SmackDown wasn't particularly good. This isn't going to take me very goddamn long. It did have a very edgy start, so to speak. Haha, uh -huh, you know, because his name's Edge. You know, if I said his real name, it wouldn't have made sense. A joke wouldn't have made sense. And he talks about how he's got a big decision here. Elimination Chamber's coming up. Who's going to walk out as WWE Champion? Who's going to walk out as Universal Champion? Here's Roman with the J-Man. J and Heyman. J-Man, if you will. And the piped-in crowd noise was absolute goddamn ass. He says, Roman says, Edge, well, do you want a main eventer or do you want the main eventer? And Edge says, whoever I pick, well, that's going to be the main event of Mania. It could be AJ Styles. It could be anybody else. It's going to be this. And then Sammy shows up to talk about, well, those two guys and being, you know, shunned uh, so often by the media and by everybody. And man, he's really turned in this whole heel turn, despite the fact he does so much good outside of WWE. Vince naturally makes him the goddamn heel. Ha! Huh. That Fox approves of how this is done. Anyway, um, Jay ends up kicking Sammy in the face. This actually wasn't that bad of an opening segment. Uh, Roman does whisper something into Edge's ear. Uh, you want to do what? How deep? Or maybe Hail Hydra? I have no goddamn idea. Maybe it's a quick recipe. How to do a good scone. And then Big E's on commentary with a couch and a foot massager. And it looked like he was really comfortable. Apollo is talking about how Big E cannot get rid of him. He will win the Intercontinental Championship. Okay, Apollo's been doing this heel turn, and boy, he cemented it here. He took on Nakamura in a match that wasn't that bad, actually. This is, sadly, probably the most well-wrestled match of the night, because the main event was kind of messy. But Big E got, you know, knocked down off his couch, and then we go to the break. Uh, match was well-wrestled, and Nakamura pinned Apollo, and Apollo was all upset. And then he was going to get the steps, and he was going to destroy Nakamura, and Big E said, no, walk away, walk away. I kept telling him to walk away. And then a Pearl Harbor job by Apollo on Big E, and also Nakamura. Good old Gorilla Monsoon line right there, and then Apollo hits uh, him with the steel steps, and then Big E rolls back out, and then uh, it's like he was going to throw the steps on him in the ring, but no, he just throws the steps out there, clearly not on Big E, because he wasn't going to be that careless, but they implied it because they didn't actually shoot it. And then Big E got stretchered out. And he was able to get out of the Thunderdome. He was able to get beyond Thunderdome. Anyway, then Rollins shows up in silk pajamas. Silk Rollins. It's like silk stockings, only infinitely weirder. I don't know why he was dressed like that. People made the comparison that he was dressed like Chris Jericho. No, Seth Rollins actually has talent to spare. Jericho's just washed up. So anyway, he talks about his return being ruined, and he's going to sue the SmackDown roster. That is all I got out of this. I do not know what they're doing with Seth Rollins. I don't really like the direction they're going with it. I didn't mind the Messiah stuff. Eventually, it grew on me a little bit. This is stupid. This is just not presenting... It's not even that they're presenting him as a heel. They're just not presenting him well. Embrace the vision. Apparently, he's a big Vanessa Bourne fan. To be fair, so am I. I'd like to see Vanessa Bourne back on WWE television at some point. <laughs> Edge talks to KO about, oh, you haven't uh, quit facing Roman. You just keep uh, getting back up. You get knocked down, but you get back up again. Ain't nothing going to keep you down. If that song isn't in your head, you're better than me. So, uh, Ruby and Liv versus Natty and Tamina. Oh, boy, we get Tamina around three women. A snooker around three women. This will end well. Uh, Liv really had to try hard to bounce around for Tamina, who is basically like a fucking statue at this point. I like Natty. 
And Natty and Liv in a singles uh, match, maybe a series of matches actually wouldn't be that bad. Or Natty and Ruby. But <laughs> Billy at one point running down because she's tired of the Riot Squad uh, refusing her advances, which sounded a lot less dirty in my head before I said it. And she's wearing cat ears and everything, and the, the Billy bounce, it was nice. Uh, Billy Kay should be featured a little bit better here. Tamina Pin Ruby, well, that pretty much, you know, puts a wrap there on Ruby being taken seriously for about six months, and then she kicks Billy. I'm glad that Natty, you couldn't have Natty get the win. Why does Tamina need to get the win in 2021? Edge then mocks Corbin about his suit and his expensive watch, and he says, hey, here's my timer, it's a phone, he even takes pictures. And Corbin refuses a, a picture being taken. Oh no, Corbin hates technology. I mean, I don't know what the fuck this was about. Edge was actually being kind of funny. We then get the ding-dong hello with Nia and Shayna. And Bailey is talented enough to carry this off. At least I wanted to say that this was painful. Nia say, and look, this can it doesn't matter what your preference is. But Nia says, oh, you know, be, say, they say Bianca's the sexiest. Hello, I'm right here. Naya, sorry, you're not my cup of tea. You're not the cup of tea of a lot of people. If you like Naya that way, that is totally fine. But nope, I'll bash myself in the head before I do something like that. Moving on. Um, Shayna really is slumming it here, and I'm not even knocking Shayna. She deserves better than this. Reginald shows up because they will not drop this storyline. I have nothing against him as a performer. I'd like to see more of what he can do. But then Sasha shows up. I'm the boss. I call the shots. And then here's Bianca. We get a lot of yelling. And then Reginald's hey, like, hey, why don't we have a six-person tag? Reginald apparently is taking over for Adam Pearce. Sonya Deville went off with Big E while he got stretched out. So I guess she had nothing better to do. And they d decide to do that. So it's all six of them. The heels on one side, you know. And Nia's superior immune system. So they are absolutely good. I'm going to keep picking on Nia until she pulls her head out of her ass. Which is going to take a while. Because she can get a lot of stuff there in her hole, so to speak. And Bailey is wrestling in socks. Why that was amusing to me, I have no goddamn idea. She was also dressed like a drama teacher that I had in college. And that's all I can say about that. So, um, Reggie and Nia. So... Okay, cool. We had this happen. We had the other women beating each other down, and then she landed on her hole, and oh no, what the fuck's going on now? Now the thing, the worm has turned on this meme, and Sasha drop kicks Reginald, who's held by Nia, and he pins her, and I think Nia was supposed to kick out, but she forgot to, or they just made it look bad, but yeah, he pinned Nia, so that, the and <laughs> we get later, and I'm going to talk about this, but we get... Sasha and Bianca versus Nia and Shayna at Elimination Chamber. And I'll talk about that in my predictions. We then get Cesaro talking about Seth's attack, winning the chamber. Edge uh, praises him and says, well, you know, maybe he'll maybe he'll face him, uh, you know, at Mania. Cesaro's like, hey, maybe I'll face you at Mania. That'd be an interesting match. Ain't gonna have it at Mania. Be cool for a B pay-per-view, but it, it certainly ain't happening at Mania. And then we have Gable and Otis versus Ray and Dominic. Rude and Ziggler on commentary. I think the entrances were longer than this match. I don't know what happened. The Gable and Otis were in the ring, I guess, too long, and the referee decided to just call the match. Ray got laid out, and then and then Ray got laid out again with a splash from Otis off the ropes. I don't know why they didn't just fucking say, oh, the referee has disqualified Gable and Otis. And they turned Otis heel. Whatever. Who the fuck cares? Um, join Team Otis. No, I will not. You know who you are. Hi, no, I'm not. But, hey, a heel Otis, whatever. What the fuck happened to Tucker? They just send him home? Genuine question. What happened to Tucker? Um, Daniel Bryan and Edge tease a match, and there we go. Everybody in the WWE Universe, hell, the wrestling universe, lost their goddamn mind, because that would be pretty damn cool. Ray and Dominic leave slowly because Ray apparently needs to be taken uh, to a local medical facility for bruised ribs and, yes, anal bleeding. What? Wow. Yeah, I had to say it. That Michael Cole line is going to live on forever. And speaking, let me just say right now, speaking of Michael Cole, Michael Cole's so bad at his job, they should just not have commentary on SmackDown instead of having Michael Cole do commentary. He has been bad since 99. He's bad now. He sucks. They need to get him off commentary. If he wants to be a producer, let him be a fucking producer. WWE commentary is at its worst at this point. And that's not even knocking. Vic's okay. Tom's okay. Byron does what he can. Wade shouts Beth. Beth is knowledgeable, but I don't think she's that great on commentary. She's not horrible. Samoa Joe... 
has just been assimilated to do whatever. Corey's a fucking lost cause. And speaking of Corey, oh, hey, here's, here's, here's Carmella uh, talking about Reggie and spilling wine on him. And they're trying to do the DiBiase Virgil storyline, only infinitely worse. Because DiBiase's, you know, DiBiase's follicles down here have more charisma than Carmella ever will in her entire body and in her entire goddamn life. Also, earlier they had Brian and Cesaro talk about how Owens always betrays his tag partners. But Owens says, no, I will not do that. Despite the fact it happened 50 million other times. Yeah, Michael Cole's really bad at his job. If you like Michael Cole, that's fine. I don't. Jay, Sammy, and Corbin versus Brian, Cesaro, and Owens. And he failed to say intervals multiple goddamn times. We did 20 takes, and that was the best one. Heyman joins commentary, and him and Edge shout at each other, and then Brian taps out Sammy, and then everybody get in here. Edge spears Corbin after Brian gets laid out, and then Roman manages to, you know, knock down Edge. Oh, no, we're getting that match. We know we're getting that match at Mania. I think it's going to be a good match. This wasn't that good of an episode of SmackDown. It just really fucking wasn't. Let's get on to the Elimination Chamber 2021 predictions. This is what is basically available as of 7.30 p.m. my time. If they add anything, excuse me for not possessing the clairvoyance to see this. Shayna and Nia versus Sasha and Bianca women's tag title match. What happened to Lana and Naomi getting a tag title shot? Not that I want Lana to get a t uh, you know get any kind of championship on her. Sorry, I'm not a fan of Lana in the ring. I don't have anything against her as a person. But Naomi and Lana, I thought, had a shot. Did they just forget that? What's going on? Anyway, Nia and Shayna are probably going to win by DQ because I think Carmella is going to go out there or Reginald's going to go out there because they're going to have another Sasha Carmella match either on SmackDown or at uh, Fastlane. And hopefully Sasha's going to win because nobody needs to see Carmella as champion or in a championship match at Mania. Or in any championship match, again, for that matter. Carmella should not be anywhere near the title picture. I just fear they're going to go back to it. But I have Shayna. Shayna. Shayna and Nia winning via DQ. Then we have Lashley and Lee uh, and Riddle in the three-way U.S. title match, and that's provided that Lee is going to actually be able to make it. Apparently, they were saying on Raw, he's not medically cleared. I think that's a storyline. I got Lashley winning. If Riddle somehow won, he would have to pin Lee. Maybe Lashley enters the chamber. Maybe he wins the championship. That'd be kind of cool. But I think Lashley's going to retain. He's going to defend it at Mania. I really don't think they're going to hot shot him to the WWE Championship picture. It would be kind of cool because he is he has been protected a whole lot. But I think he's going to lose the championship at um, Mania and then maybe have some kind of some kind of post Mania program where maybe he takes out Drew and wins the championship there. <laughs> Oops, spoiled it. Drew versus Styles versus Jeff versus Orton versus Kofi versus Sheamus in the Chamber. And Kofi could get taken out by Ali, and we could get Ali in the match. Now, if Ali takes Kofi out, or the group that calls themselves Retribution, led by Ali, take, um, you know, Kofi out, maybe then you slot Lashley in there if he lost the U.S. championship. I have Drew winning, because if you take the title off of Drew here after you took it off at Hell in a Cell, and then put it back on him just before Survivor Series, you can't hot shot the championship. And I know he held it for like six months, and he would have held it now, by this point, for about three months. Keep it on him. Don't have him pin Sheamus. Have somebody else pin Sheamus. That way you could do this at Fastlane. And then maybe you could build it towards Mania. I don't know. Sheamus and Drew could be a decent Mania you know, match. I just don't think that you need to put it on Sheamus. I don't think he should be champion again. It, it, it just, to me, it doesn't make sense. So I got Drew retaining, and then Jay, Owens, Corbin, Sammy, Cesaro, Bryan um, in a chamber match uh, for a universal title shot. I have Owens winning, and then I have Roman beating him right after. That's pretty much it right there. One hardly needs to go on about this pay-per-view. I don't think it's going to be bad, but it's a short card, and hopefully they just keep it like about two and a half hours, make it like a takeover, because the chamber matches are going to go long, because it's five-minute intervals. Anyway, uh, let me know your picks in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Redlin. I'll see you soon.